the key factor in understanding the terrestrial ice age dynamics and the precursors that are already evident is located in understanding the electric nature of the universe. Nothing is more fundamental for than this. Gravity was the focus of astronomy from Kepler onward, but in the 21st century the focus is shifting to electromagnetism and plasma. According to researchers associated with the Los Alamos National Laboratory, 99.999% of all the observable matter in the universe exists in the plasma state. We live in a plasma universe. Because plasma consists of free electrons and protons, plasma is as good a conductor of electricity than copper, silver, or gold. Lightning offers a dramatic manifestation of this conductive property. However, plasma electricity is also subject to gravity. All matter is subject to the force of gravity, including the plasma particles. What makes the plasma particles unique is that they also react to electric and magnetic forces. The electric and magnetic forces are 36 orders of magnitude stronger than the force of gravity. Nor do they diminish with the square of the distance, as does gravity, but only linearly, which gives these forces near infinite reach. It is hard to acknowledge that plasma in space is electricity that responds to both the force of gravity and the electric force. Electric plasma is attracted to the sun by its gravity. In this interaction the electric density becomes great to the point that an electric charge separation occurs. When the built-up tension becomes great enough, an electric arc discharge occurs with the power of the electric force. On Earth the discharge is seen occasionally as lightning. On the Sun, the arc lightning is continuous and universal. It illumines the Sun from the outside. The reactive region is called the photosphere. When the discharge becomes too explosive, it occasionally rips a hole into the photosphere which reveals the lower region of the sun as being dramatically darker. It also rips a hole into the theory that the sun is internally powered by a nuclear fusion furnace deep within. If it was, the lower layers would be brighter instead of being darker. Great efforts are being made with convoluted theories to rescue the solar nuclear fusion concept. So far none of these efforts have been able to explain what forces, other than the electric force, would cause the solar winds to be accelerated to millions of miles per hour as they flow away from the sun and thereby heat up to millions of degrees. Ultimately it will be acknowledged that our sun is an electric star, and all the stars in the universe likewise, even that the universe is electrically powered and is thereby anti-entropic in nature. The factor of electric density is probably the most significant determining element in the dynamic interplay in the electric system that creates and maintains the solar heliosphere. If we are looking for ice age precursors, we will find them in this system long before they become evident elsewhere. So, what do we find there? What we find there is amazing. NASA's Ulysses spacecraft has measured a 20% decrease in solar wind pressure in a time frame of 10 years. The Ulysses mission was launched in 1990 to encircle the Sun in a unique orbit that carries it over both the Sun's poles and its equator, giving Ulysses a global view of solar wind activity. The principal investigator, Dave McComas, tells us that the observed reduction makes the heliosphere the weakest it's been since the monitoring of the solar wind began almost 50 years ago. The spacecraft made three orbits around the Sun on a polar trajectory. The values received from the third orbit, shown in blue, were radically lower than those received during the first orbit, shown in green. While the speed of the million miles per hour solar wind hasn't decreased much, only 3%, the change in pressure comes as a surprise. It is made up of reductions in solar wind temperature and also in solar wind density. In the time frame between the three orbits, the solar wind has become 13% cooler and 20% less dense. Ulysses also found that the Sun's underlying magnetic field has weakened by more than 30% since the mid-1990s, which reduces the natural shielding against cosmic rays even more. Ulysses' cosmic ray data shows, as one would expect, as the result of the lower solar wind pressure, that the high-energy electrons in the gigan electron volt range have increased in numbers. They have jumped in numbers by about 20%. That's an enormous jump. 
this jump is an undeniable telltale component of a climate change precursor and ice age precursor that is manifest in increases in cosmic rays reaching the Earth. It is known from measurements and structures that formed near the end of the last ice age that the cosmic ray flux was twice as dense during the glacial period. With a 20% jump in cosmic ray flux having already occurred during the last 50 years, we are presently a fifth of the way towards full ice age conditions. If this progression is linear in nature, we will experience full ice age conditions in 200 years. However, the rapid decline in solar wind pressure that the Ulysses probe has measured suggests that the progression towards the next ice age is exponential rather than linear. In this case, if the trend continues exponentially, we will be in full ice age conditions in just a few decades, possibly even before 2050. That's the awesome precursor that Ulysses brings home. With his achievement completed, the Ulysses mission was closed down in 2009, after nearly 19 years in operation, putting the onus on humanity to act on its discovery. To the best of my knowledge the Ulysses mission was not closed down as the result of equipment failures. Officially its mission objective had been achieved, but in the light of its discovery, in 2008, that is critical for the future of humanity, one cannot help wondering if a deeper reason might not have stood behind the termination of the mission, as its finding countered the global warming dogma, against which high-profile opposition is not allowed. What can we discover from the cosmic dynamics? We can learn a great deal from it. But first we need to understand what is involved there. We can recognize four major cyclical processes happening on the scene of cosmic dynamics. They are the 11-year solar cycles, the 100,000-year ice age glaciation cycles, and two very long cycles with cycle times of 62 and 145 million years. The 11-year solar cycle gives us a hint of the nature of the cosmic dynamics. With the Sun being now recognized as an electrically heated star, the 11-year solar cycles are not inherent in the Sun itself, but reflect the electrodynamic resonance of the heliosphere as a whole, a sphere that is roughly 30 billion kilometers wide. A large portion of the electric plasma particles of the solar wind are flowing back to the Sun in the heliospheric current sheet that is aligned with the ecliptic. In the resulting dynamic system the 11-year solar cycles unfold in the form of electric intensity cycles resonating within the heliosphere. During the 11-year electric intensity cycles, which are expressed in the number of sunspots, that occur during the cycles, the light and heat output of the sun remains constant within a fraction of a percent. However, in the shorter wavelength spectrum of the ultraviolet band that corresponds with higher energy levels, a 20-fold variance during the solar cycles has been detected by a Japanese research team. Unknown at this point is what we may see when the general electric power background is reduced during the coming glaciation environment. Will the 20-fold variance that we presently see in the UV band become expressed also in the visible light band where it would dramatically affect the power of photosynthesis in plants with a high impact on agriculture? The potential for this to happen may be the reason why humanity came out of the last glaciation cycle with a minuscule population of only 1 to 10 million people after 2 million years of human development. It could be that the currently observed 20-fold variance in UV solar radiation during the 11-year cycles is already a precursor for the coming transition to renewed glaciation, which only cannot be recognized as a precursor for the lack of historic data. The Ice Age glaciation cycles occur in much longer time frames than the 11-year solar resonance cycles, though the dynamics involved are similar. The 100,000-year glaciation cycles reflect the larger size of our galaxy in comparison with the solar heliosphere, but structurally both reflect the same principles of dynamics. While the electric envelope of our galaxy is not visible with its density being below the visible threshold, the model for its electric structure has been theorized by Han S. Alfin a few decades ago. Modern instrumentation has made it possible for some parts of the model to be seen and its principle to be recognized in some of the more powerful galaxies of the cosmos, 
The tall spikes on the 100,000-year cycles of the interglacial warm periods reflect the typical pattern of electric discharge systems, where discharge events occur at regular intervals that equal out imbalances of electric charge density differences between major galactic regions. The principle is not unfamiliar to kids who have experienced the dump bucket in their water parks or swimming pools. As the dump bucket is filled from a face it, it reaches a stage where it becomes top-heavy and unstable until it flips over and discharges its content in a big splash that the kids love. The cycle time depends on the size of the bucket and the flow rate of the input stream. Electric systems of a similar nature pulsate much faster, such as the Crab Nebula, a fast oscillating system that pulses 30 times a second operating in an intense high-power region of our galaxy. In the galaxy as a whole, where the charge differential builds up slowly and the structure is 100,000 light-years in size, the cycle time is correspondingly longer. The point is that the interglacial climates are determined by the intensity of an electric discharge event. The electric environment during the discharge event is obviously radically different than that of the normal background. When the bucket is empty, the big splash is over, and the normal environment returns. We are presently in the transition zone, where this happens on the galactic scale. We are coming close to the point, when the last drops are coming out of the bucket, evidence has been found in sediments of extremely long cycles of climate variations on Earth. The recorded pattern is a combination of two overlaid cycles, the strongest is a 145 million year cycle, and the weaker a 62 million year cycle. When the two cycles overlap at their low point, deep ice age epochs result, such as the one 450 million years ago in which 57% of all families of species of life in the oceans became extinct. The only other time frame where the low points of the two cycles come together simultaneously in a dramatic manner is the present time frame, which is once again a long epoch of cyclical ice ages. Since we do not live in a mechanistic universe, but in a universe where the cosmos is electrically interconnected over vast distances, the very long cycles in the Earth's climate history reflect the dynamics of cosmic electric resonances. In a very real manner, the climates on Earth are determined at vast distances away from it, with galaxies of various sizes, being electrically interconnected in long chains, each of the interconnecting channels has logically a unique resonance frequency and intensity. One of these resonances would account for the 145 million year cycle and the other for the 62 million year cycle, the Andromeda galaxy is approximately 2.5 million light years from Earth and is the nearest major galaxy to the Milky Way, though not the closest overall. It is however the largest galaxy of the local group of galaxies, which contains the Milky Way galaxy, the Triangulum galaxy, and about 30 smaller galaxies. Our 145 and 62 million year cycles are evidently resonance cycles within the interconnecting electric currents, called Birkelin currents, that span across the local cluster, that all galaxies are electrically interconnected is evident in this partial view of a cosmic deep field that opens up an unrestricted view of 35,000 galaxies. The electric evidence is seen in the alignment of the galaxies along filamentary strings and networks of strings. Electric filaments of Birkeland currents, in which the galaxies are located, create the long linear alignment of the galaxies, like beads on a string. Electric and magnetic forces shape all galaxies and their operational dynamics. Gravitational mechanics do not apply on this scale. Gravity is the weakest force in the universe, and its effective force diminishes with the square of the distance 